Hello, citizen. I'm joking. Uh, 4.03 p.m. Sunday, September 9th, 2012. Um, yeah, I was joking about that. Even though I know I've been talking about some a lot of different things uh, that I plan on doing, this is going to be a personal chat video. Uh, this particular YouTube channel and everything I say here is for everybody. Uh, but I've come to the understanding that I've come to the understanding that I don't know if you remember this woman, the woman who has dedicated, uh, what, 30, 40, is it 32, 33 years of her life uh, standing for world peace outside of the White House, living outside the White House in a tent, undergoing whatever she has underwent. And she was still there when I went there. And that's uh, what she said, though. Uh, you know, you, you cannot achieve world peace if we cannot clean up whatever it is we need to have cleaned up in the United States or in another country or in another country or in another country. It, it, it doesn't work. For instance, in the United States, uh, what good is it that we have businesses that uh, are in the business of manufacturing, producing weapons for the sale of, not for you know, ma manufacturing these weapons for the unit for the government of the United States, but for the sale of these weapons, not for the, the citizens of the United States, but for the purpose of exporting these all these weapons to other various countries or whatever. It, it's that's no good. But um, yesterday I went to uh, help out my friend Oleg. We drove to Pennsylvania. Uh, it was a four-hour drive. It was quite a Quite a trip, uh, and uh, he was buying a fifty-dollar piano that is valued for about fourteen hundred, fifteen hundred, sixteen hundred dollar piano, and he got it for a bargain. And we had an, an amazing opportunity to speak to the man that was selling this piano, and this man was a real American. There's no other word to explain that if. Anybody from outside is ever wondering, you know, you know, oh, he's American, or he's American. No, that man was a real American. He knew what it meant to be an American. Uh, all the ideals that the original framers of the Constitution envisioned for a great America, he was aware of. And throughout his life, he lived on those ideals, maybe not... Uh, as so consciously as I put it to be, but he did, and uh, he's selling his house because he's moving to a different state uh, for work purposes. He works for big business. Uh, he has three kids. Just an amazing, amazing, like just a very inspirational man. I think, or in terms of what I want to do, it just proves to me that there's a lot of great people out there and I would uh, consider him to be one of them. Um, you know, this is just some of the things he spoke about, like through his childhood. You know, he spoke that, you know, it was one summer when he went to go work, and he, everything that he worked for, he brought back to the family. And as a result, his family bought him three t-shirts, two, two pairs of socks, and one pants, and that's all he had to go to school and he never knew any better he never knew that his family was poor or underprivileged or unfortunate all he knew was that he had a family and they worked as a unit to do what they needed to do uh, he spoke about the fact that he had a gun and there was times where he went hunting killed a deer brought back the deer to the family and the family ate that deer for a week everybody had something to eat these are the basic fundamental ideals of just simply self self-reliance you're not relying on anybody else but yourself or your family but at the same time you know it's right we have people who are unfortunate and don't have those types of <coughs> fundamental things that for instance he had he had a family 
uh, in any case, I got his number and I found out how much he's selling the house for and the property tax rate in Pennsylvania. It's such a funny thing. The, the, the property tax in Pennsylvania for that house was like no more than $2,000 a year. The property tax in New Jersey is about seventeen dollars to $40,000 a year. Maybe thirteen, maybe twenty, maybe twenty-five or thirty, but that's a lot of money just to pay for property tax. So, uh, you know, it's just the idea that necessarily more government or more government agencies does not simply does not simply mean or imply that we have a better society. Yeah, government agencies are important. Government is important as long as the basics of it are met, of by and for the people. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll stop with, with that. At the same time on the way back, I'm happy to have you leave to have uh, Oleg's philosophical understanding of what is it that, in terms of what it is, you know, he kind of began to take me a little bit more seriously now. After about a week or two weeks or three weeks, I've been, I've been you know, hammering him with some of my ideas. He came out and uh, at the same time he had a lot of his own concerns because my friend Oleg, I mean, he, he grew up here too. Even though he's an immigrant, he knows nothing of his country, just like I know. Nothing of Russia. I have some ideas, but I've never lived there. I've never experienced all this, all this stuff. I've been living here in America. And I've been observing and experiencing and living in this thing. I don't see a great country. I don't see a great government on our local county and state level. It's, it's just some sort of a, well, like I said, I don't want to, this is a personal chat, so I'll stop there. Um, So, I was happy to hear some Oleg's ideas because Oleg has spent the last number of his, I don't know how many years, three, four, five, six, six, four, five or six years working at a bank, dealing with money, dealing with people who have money, and dealing with people who don't have money. Uh, and he had his own idea. And I'm really happy to be a part of his idea at the same time to have him be part of my idea and his idea is well if I'm elected I get a budget I get a budget I think it's 109,000 or 110,000 or 120,000 dollars I assume per year I will investigate it's not I assume it's not a, a year not for two years <coughs> uh, budget for a staff and uh, I would like to have Oleg be part of my staff and uh, what uh, I would like to have him do, or this is what he wants to do, and it's perfect for me, is for sim for him to simply become an investigator on my behalf, for on the behalf of the people of New Jersey, and 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 uh, and systematically visit and investigate every single government agency that we have and look for ways to improve efficiency and decrease the amount of money they need to operate. So for instance, uh, when I went to the Bergen County Board of Social Services, I'm already convinced that this is a total waste of, uh, this is a waste of $40 million a year on the taxpayer of New Jersey to have this type of government agency exist, or at least the way it operates. What this government agency, the function of this agency is very important in today's society. We have people in our society who who cannot even name five countries outside of the United States. I know you listening to this might feel and say that this is stupid or these people are stupid, etc. They're here and we have to better them. And this is important to have this type of a function of government to teach people and to educate people on the fact of their government assistance uh, rights and or at least and at the same time help them uh, get enrolled in these uh, programs but not just simply that they don't stop there they need to be part of their lives 
a little bit more and to educate them. A lot of education, a lot of wisdom needs to be passed on to them so they can at least begin to at least a little bit better themselves. And by bettering themselves, they will better their children and their children's children. Because some of these people that are coming into this facility, the Bergen County Board of Social Services, for instance, not all of them are uh, not all of them are just simply adults. Some of them have children, and if I'll stop there. So I'm happy if Oleg does that and goes around everywhere, because I didn't really, you know, I, at the same time I wanted I wanted to do that too, but I'm, I'm looking I'm I'm taking on two principles that I've. You know, I spent a lot of, I don't know when I heard this a while ago. This is something that's been brewing in my head for a really long time. Um, I'm going by two principles of my own personal, uh, uh, whatever. And the two principles are, one, uh, if I set out to do everything, I will be able to do nothing, and I will be over-swamped by everything. So I need to have my own goal, very simple. And I, you know, some of the, these ideas here, at least the number one idea there, if the politicians abuse their position of power, they go to life with no parole or death by a firing range. That would be my number one thing that I would want to accomplish on the state level. That is very important. The damage that one person in position of government on the administrative level, on the elected level, on an appointed level, does um, the damage that that individual may do on society is greater than the United States having 10 times, 10 times of 9-11. At the same time, there's some basic fundamentals that I will be applying myself to. If if one thousand if one thousand U.S. soldiers are killed in the line of duty, it is sad, but not a tragedy. If one citizen or one civilian is murdered on the soil of the United States, that is a tragedy. If If 10 police officers are killed in the line of duty, that is sad, but not a tragedy. If one civilian or one citizen is murdered on the soil of the United States, that is a tragedy. Now, having said that, it is important to note that the families of the murdered, killed soldiers or, or police officers in the line of duty it is devastating to their families and we must note that that this is not some sort of a, um, uncompassionate philosophy no but on the scope of society a soldier there's an expectation that a soldier may die in the line of duty there's an expectation that a police officer may die in the line of duty the soldier, the police officer, is aware of that. Everybody else is aware of that. The families are aware of that. Why is it that families cry when the soldier goes away to a war? Because they are concerned that the soldier may never come back. And they are aware that may, that may happen. That is some basic philosophy right there for any place in the world, though, I think. Okay, so if Oleg does that, that would be fantastic. Ideally, you know, it would be even better if Oleg was a, a citizen. And uh, because the position I'm running for, I didn't even begin to, to fathom the possibility that I will have assistance. But the position that I'm running for, there's another person. There's two people that they elect per district, two assemblymen or assemblywomen and one senator. I did not even fathom the possibility that there is somebody else with the exact same position that I have uh, for the benefit of the district.
for the benefit of the what whatever how many ever people they're living there maybe one you know <coughs> a lot of people living there but not like the, you know altogether I think there's altogether I think maybe two hundred thousand people living there but that includes children that includes babies that includes high school students that includes middle school students uh, but there's at least 140,000 residents slash citizens who are, are over the age of 18, um, etc. Okay, so ideally it would be better if Oleg was a citizen, and then he could be running for the position, and I could be running for the position, and we can both get elected, and he could have his own thing going on, and I could have my own thing going on. But for the, but it's but because of circumstances, because the, the way that the immigration system is structured in the United States, which is a responsibility of the federal government, I have very little power in that. The state has very little, the state government has very little power on that currently. I don't know if there's anything that I could possibly do to help immigrants, besides the fact that at one point I was an immigrant, and today I am a naturalized citizen other than the mere fact of inspiration, motivation, hope, and the like. Um, it would be reasonable for me to have him on my staff and do that. What is it that he wants to do in terms of going out there and looking up, looking for all these little, um, basically making it more efficient because he seems to like doing something like that and it's uh, it's a simple arithmetic it's in quite honesty it's one plus one plus one equals one uh... two sorry Ooh, two sorry i'm gonna smoke a cigarette uh, i'm not proud to do this I like make videos when i smoke cigarettes because it sends out a bad message for anybody younger, don't smoke this. So, having said all that, if he does uh, that, it would be perfect. And I could pay him for that out of the taxpayer money that is allocated to me for the budget of my staff. Uh, it's just that I was concerned about how to properly, reasonably allocate that budget because initially I thought about, you know what? If I have a certain amount of money, why not just hire a hundred people and pay a minimum? Not a hundred people is not reasonable. Uh, why not hire um, five or six people, pay a minimum wage, and expect them to work 60, 80 hours a week? That's not reasonable. They're not gonna. I'm not. I'm gonna have. A, I'm not gonna find anybody who's gonna be prepared to do anything like that. I think. Um, at the same time there's the basic cost of living and if the basic cost of living needs are not set on an individual it is very hard for them to be able to accomplish anything if they're going to be concerned about um, food or how to pay for shelter at the same time there's going to be a lot of uh, expenses incurred on their behalf under the direction of them working for me because for instance in the case of Oleg there's going to be a lot of traveling for him sitting in the car and traveling different part different agencies within the government and spending a ton of money on gasoline not to mention if his car uh, undergoes some sort of uh, damage because of wear and tear as a result of this exhaustive uh, traveling so I know Oleg right now makes, um, he told me, I think he makes, I think, $30,000 or $40,000 a year. So if I can just pay him, <sighs> because what he would have to be, you know, at the same time I told him, I would expect you to work 60, at least 60 hours a week. And that's just, there's, there's this, isn't, this is not some 9 to 5 bullshit. I mean, pardon my vulgarity um, but yeah that has to change we have people in government who work nine to five this is not a this is not some sort of a nine to five job if you're maybe if you're watching this and you're in government this is um, I'm sorry but if you feel that it is okay for you to 
work in government and simply think that it is a it is the right way for you to work there nine to five 40 hours a week no I I mean for the people that I will be gathering and building my team up and surrounding myself with I expect them to sacrifice a lot and I did I, I will I demand from them blood sweat and tremendous amounts of dedication and work uh, so I have very little uh, doubt that I will not win or I will uh, again I hate to use this word win or lose because it's uh, it, it, because it's it's at the expense of the citizen if I win or lose it's at the expense of the citizen if I lose the citizen loses if I win then so who loses <laughs> so I have very little doubt that I will not be elected as long as I maintain focus, dedication, and I commit and plan and execute on everything that it is that I'm in the process, the current process of working on. Um, I heard back from Oliver, and Oliver is very excited and looking forward to being responsible for building um, a great campaign website. That I would that would be that would serve me as a tool at this exit to that will serve me as a tool at the same time act as an educational uh, tool because of my campaign object objectives. My number one campaign objective is not to be elected. That is my second or third objective. My first campaign objective is simply just that to educate the residents, the citizens on their basic duties and responsibilities of being a citizen of a great nation, the United States of America. At the same time, I'm concerned about some of the people that over the course of my work that I have been doing on YouTube would begin to... Um, I never wanted to create this or say that all oh, America is better than this country, or all oh, America is better than this country. Oh, it sucks that you live here. It's so great here. I don't like that. That's said, but I can see why now it is important for me to just to not. I'm not, again. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying America is a great country. Uh, but at the same time, it's possible for me to say America is one of the greatest countries or is the greatest countries or is it, it is the greatest country but that's for the purpose of uniting the people in America at the same time it's hard to explain but I wanted to make that clear and at the same time I'm concerned if I would upset some people into thinking that their country or their government or their society or their way of life is not sufficient in any way uh, and I would hate to be responsible for somebody to think that way it's just simply the matter of in American history we've had people who sacrificed their lives who have dedicated their lives to great ideals to great things that that we have today in American life as a result of their efforts um, just simply that of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. it's beyond words the contribution he has made to the American society and still today, he make, continues to make that contribution. Long after his death, long, a, long after his assassination. So, that's from that. So, everything seems to be going. Like I initially, I, I was a, a bit concerned about um, the time again. It's September 9, and then the election for this particular uh, government uh, position that I'm seeking office to, uh, the election is in on November of 2013 of next year. So currently I have 12, <coughs> 14 months. Initially, in my head, as I just the, the, the when, it, when this was a fragmented idea I believed that 15 months would be sufficient 
but now realistically uh, I see the reality of that there is still tr uh, a need of a tremendous amount of work for simply for me to even begin uh, for you for me even to be begin because um, I will not begin till I have a sufficient campaign website that I'm proud of and that if in the in the course of my operation I were to cease to exist for whatever reason I don't etc I uh, just keep it at that for now that the campaign website would would continue to serve as a benefit to society much like I have certain videos on YouTube on this YouTube channel that I fee strongly feel long after I'm gone they will serve a purpose in somebody's life a positive purpose but in terms of my campaign website in it not just to serve the purpose of some people but a lot of people a lot of people um, so I'm gonna smoke my cigarette now I'm concerned about September 11th that is the day of the 9-11 attacks and that is the day that I will be that's in two days no, it's Tuesday that I will um, well this is what I was this is, this is what what's 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 happening on September 11th I am going to um, this training course that's going to educate me on the responsibilities uh, the rules of conduct and the regulations that involve in somebody like me starting out uh, a campaign and then uh, henceforth I will be um, seeking campaign donations donations from the public the residents the citizens and there are some regulations that I need by law set forth that I need to have uh, that I need to be applied that I uh, that my campaign must uh, follow if not there there there's ugh. and I have some questions too that um, this this particular um, training training thing that exists is actually free of cost I did not have to pay anybody for this and I was uh, I was quite amazed and I'm very fortunate that you know, we, we have a great government here. It's just there's just a few little things that need to be fixed. That's all it is, really. Uh, a couple of people need just need to be quite quite simply uh, removed from their roles of government. Um, you know, not no no not everybody needs to be flushed out of the whole system. No 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 no. But it it is just that in reality, it's just a couple of people really. On the grand scope of things, we just have a couple of people that just ruin it for everybody else because they have so much power and what they do just impacts so many people uh, so I can take this course online uh, but I wanted to have it a person in front of me with a notebook I'm gonna be writing down notes taking notes I'm gonna be asking questions maybe I can connect with this person to see to even seek more uh, information at the same time I plan to visit uh, uh, I think I have, I have to look this up I'm not gonna do it today uh, after after this I'm gonna resume to answering comments from my previous YouTube channel no I'm gonna take a little break I'm gonna go outside and get some fresh air just kinda look at some trees just try to relax um, um, there are two government agencies that are, are important to me uh, I mean for my operation here one is the agency that is responsible for the staffing of uh, um, for staffing of uh, publicly publicly elect uh, government representatives, and I need to find out exactly uh, how does that all that work, uh, and if there's any uh, certain cer cer certain guidelines or certain rules or regulations that I must uh, apply myself to or have my uh, operation be applied to. Uh, again, I'm I'm really not sure how that, all that works in terms of staffing. Of course, I need a team, but I don't need secretaries. I don't need any investigators. I need uh, researchers, etc., etc., etc. 
when there needs to be a tremendous amount of work and, and I mean at least in my in my operation there's going to be a tremendous amount of work of investigation on investigating 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 uh, as that is the best uh, course of action for that I feel is the best course of action for the, the citizens of my district uh, it's just that we're simply uh, so I need to find out what, exactly how, how all that works in terms of that agency at the same time there is a, a state agency I'm not sure if they have that state agency on, on all forms of uh, government in terms of uh, is this state agency uh, do, the, do the 49 other states of the United States have this type of agency and does the federal government have this agency in Congress basically what this agency is responsible for is to assist people like me on understanding on the research and on the assistance of how to properly draft state law so for instance I have no lawyer experience I've never went to law school it, I might, it might be hard for me to write a, a piece of legislation or a piece of law properly and we have an agency that is uh, dedicated um, to the assistance of, of me regardless if they agree or disagree with the law their, their only purpose is to serve my needs in that regard at the same time you know I, I, I hope I don't have any people that watch this that feel that we need uh, you know it's a requirement to be a lawyer to be in government no 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 that's that's not how the framers of the United States Constitution envisioned our government no 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 it's it's not written anywhere there is absolutely no requirement to be United States president other than the fact of age and you have to be a native born citizen they knew that if we were to have some sort of a professional requirement to be in the role of government it would be a breeding ground for corruption like it has been in the middle ages like it has been in the past and like how it is in certain <coughs> in certain other forms of government outside of the United States that are that have governments like a regime like a kingdom or a monarchy like in order for you to be in the position of government your father must have been a king no 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 that's not the way that the original framers of the Constitution envisioned and put down on paper on the United States Constitution the rules of simply just this what I speak and what I plan on doing to be elected as a representative of these people my people our people all people um, when I, I wanted to say one more thing um, happiness I want to talk about a little bit of happiness I really doubt that I will find happiness in, in doing all of this. I really doubt that on my own personal desire. I mean, you know, I, I want to be happy, but I don't think I will find happiness for this. Uh, maybe I will, but I have no expectation to find happiness from any of this. And there's absolutely, if I'm, if I'm miserable, so be it. As long as, uh, as long as some of this stuff is being worked on and the society, the community, is better so be it because I you know yesterday I realized like uh, I guess it might have been like the perfect way of life for me maybe maybe for some other people kind of like a dream uh, to live you know I imagined uh, having a piece of land a substantial piece of land a ranch, um, animals, livestock, chickens, ducks, horses, cows, uh, pigs, uh, and the like, growing vegetables, leek, potatoes, corn, tomatoes, carrots, onions, and the like, growing fruits, apples, peaches, uh, strawberries, raspberries, and the like, 
waking up in the morning and going to the chicken coop and getting eggs going to the um, uh, barn and to the cows and taking out their milk and going inside uh, getting some vegetables making an omelet that is natural eggs that just that I've just harvested milk that I've just harvested using vegetables that I've just harvested and making the perfect omelet pouring milk pouring freshly squeezed orange juice that I acquired from the oranges that have grown and then I don't know it's simply feeding my family and I imagine that um, I were at least I want to have to be able to have two lives I would like to have two women in my life that's called polygamy um, traditionally speaking it's frowned upon but that's what I would like and I can, we can even begin to debate um, the, the problems of something like that like I was speaking to a friend and she said you know what happens if the other woman starts to feel jealous well well then she wouldn't be in something like this and I would not find a person that would that's gonna feel jealous or somehow you know mm -mm. children feeding the children and then getting on top of a horse and just riding out simply out of this, the desire to ride a horse and to see the mountain range and to see the sun and the clouds and the trees and when I grow tired of that life I simply would get into a car or get myself to the ocean and I would want to have a, a sailing boat that I will bring my family onto and we shall sail the oceans till we grow tired that's it so simple isn't it but and I think in today's society something like that is um, what's the point of something like that what about the cell phone what about how are you gonna pay for all of this <sighs> So, having said that, I don't know if any of this will bring me closer to that, or if it's truly something that I want, but I envisioned it, and I, I felt so happy just thinking about it. I was just so happy thinking about it. So, I don't know. But we do need to resort, or we need to go back to the basics with this, in terms of government. I'll stop there. I'm not here. I'm not. I with this. I'm not here to preach to anyone here, or I'm not preaching to anybody at all. It's just simply an understanding of you want to better yourself. You want to better. Yeah, just simply that this. That's all I would. That's all I expect. Or that's that's all I want from people. Just the idea that uh, today. I know more about myself and my life than I know about yesterday or about whatever. I still didn't smoke the cigarette because I kept getting uh, entranced into a, uh, into a thought. You know, this is somewhat of a good practice for me though unfortunately it needs to be multiplied by a, a great deal uh, in terms of the I think I mentioned this in another video you know uh, I guess the, the internet troll uh, the one that we hit there that we have in the internet that maybe some of us have interacted with or seen these types of people they've been uh, I guess a good practice on the building of my uh, resilience 
on my uh, my shield, my my shield of armor, because they just they create and they generate uh, negativity without a solution to a problem. Simply saying our government sucks is not a solution. Life sucks. That's not a solution. That's not even a problem. Life sucks. It's not a problem. It's just I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's it's I guess it's just a way to vent about your problems in a simple way, just in a simplistic way, and that's okay for people to do that. But I think it's important for people to know that that's what that is. Me saying, "Oh, this is so overwhelming." is not a, a problem or a solution it's just a, simply a way for me to to vent because it's just so so much that it's easier for me to say oh it's just so overwhelming than to go into all the detail of why it's so overwhelming and then begin to have uh, an intellectual uh, mm, Sorry, I'm getting tired from all this. I really want to go outside. Anyways, I'm going to go outside. Uh, I don't really know if anybody watches this anymore. But I think it's important though. That's why I do it. Anyways, adiós.